women talk about moving around in labor. And you read things about that too. All the great positions, all the great things to do in labor, which is fine when you're at home. The problem comes when you're at the hospital. And so I want to share with you something called our obstetrical octopus. So let's say that my mom is in labor pregnant and she'd like to get up and move around. Is that pretty easy for you to do? <laughs> Not when we start putting all the different things on for the hospital. So here is a little tip for you. Let's start and show you some of the things that happen. First, you come in and they're going to want to listen to the baby. And that's a monitor that they take and they put on your belly. One of them is to listen to the baby's heart rate. And we're going to put this here because it connects to a monitor system behind you. The other one they put on the belly is the contraction monitors. You want to see kind of what's going on on your belly with all the contractions and the labor that's happening. So that's good and well. Can you still move around pretty freely probably with those two? <laughs> as long as she doesn't go very far because you have about a couple feet lengths of cords and then you're in trouble. The other thing happens is many times they want to put an IV into you when you come into the hospital. So whether it's a hep lock, which is not connected to a bag, typically you get an IV. So we're going to put this right here and represent an IV that's been put in her and it's connected to a bag of fluids to come into her body to give her that nourishment that they want to give you in the hospital. The other thing they want to do is they also want to check on your blood pressure. So they take a cuff, they'll wrap it around your arm about there, connect you to another machine over there and check your blood pressure. Some nurses leave it on all the time. Some will do it for a little bit and then take it off, but still it's another thing that connects you to another machine. Let's say now this mom would like to possibly get an epidural. Maybe she is feeling that that's her plan for pain management, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll have the doctor will come in, talk to her about that, and then the anesthesiologist will come in and give her an epidural. So that is placed, as she'll lay forward, it's placed in her back right there, and it's connected to another machine again. So another wire. See the octopus that we are creating here. Now, the other thing they'll do too is once you get an epidural, they'll also want to check on your oxygen levels at this time to make sure things are going well in the body. So if I can have your finger, please. They'll take this, they'll put it on the finger and attach you to another machine over here. It's called a pulse ox. Now, once mom gets an epidural, she is not getting out of bed. She's gonna stay in bed. So it's kind of hard uh, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> You got all this fluid coming into you through the IV, she still has to go potty. So the nurse will put something in you called a catheter. That means that they take and put a little tube into your bladder. So we're gonna put this to represent that right there. And then that's also another tube that is coming out of you. Now, um, if you wanted to move around in labor, how easy is it with all this? Doesn't seem easy at all. No. I feel extremely restricted. Yeah, so if you try to move over there, see all the cords pulling on this side? Now she tried to move over here. She's got all the cords pulling on that side, and she's laying on her back. But we don't want her on her back when she's birthing, so this makes it very hard to move around. So before you think about getting an epidural, maybe you should think about all the cords and everything that are in place when that happens and set up a plan for how will you continue to move? How will you get into the best birthing position possible for you with all these cords attached to you? Talk to your care provider and see what other options you may have.